Well, I will say I have a lot of favorite plays out there. I'm sure as OSF audiences know, I love the American sort of classics, mid 20th century classics, but in the Shakespeare canon, Twelfth Night is my favorite play, and I think my favorite play ever. Um, I think it is as close to perfection as any play that's ever been written um, because of uh, not just thematically, but the balance that it strikes. The balance between uh, the light and the silly and then the dark and the deeply sad. And it, it captures life to me more than any play I've ever encountered. I've been lucky enough, I have been in it twice, and I just directed it, and so this will be my fourth encounter in the room with this extraordinary play, and I just, uh, I love it. I love, I love every one of the characters, which is, um, you know, sometimes you, as a director, that's your job is to love the characters, but sometimes it's not easy, and sometimes, you know, you have favorites, <laughs> but, I love every person in this play so deeply and what they're going through. Um, and I just think his particular, Shakespeare's particular genius of, um, what's the right word, uh, you know, his house of mirrors, construction, reflection, where, where things so often reflect each other to themselves. I think it happens in Twelfth Night in such a, beautiful and subtle way. Um, and I think it's about, you know, it's about really important things. It's about redemption, and it's about grief, and it's about, uh, you know, finding one's way through grief, which everybody has to do. And it's about um, giving yourself permission to love and giving yourself permission to laugh and, um, and with the full acknowledgement of sometimes what those costs are. It's not a silly play, it's not a frivolous play, although it's very, very funny, and we have some very funny people in it. Um, it's just a play that I hold very dear to my heart. The production is set in 1930s Hollywood. For, for many obvious reasons for me, I, I love that period very, very much and grew up on my uh, mother's stories of, you know, that golden age in Hollywood and her, her girlhood going to the movies with her parents and later my dad and um, I just love that era so much and I love the, the, the figures from that era, the actors and actresses. The, Fashion in that era is, you know, has not been bested, I would say, for both women and men. The silhouette is extraordinary, and working with Susan Sue, our costume designer, who is a genius, and the research has just been fun, 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 fun. Um, so I love the period, but more importantly, thematically, it felt like a good match. Um, you know, I've always, 30s Hollywood, in a way was the beginning of, I think, in our society, the notion of reinvention of self on a really, on a large public scale. So you could have somebody who was a guy from a small town in the Midwest, a farm boy, moving to Hollywood and becoming the king of Hollywood, and not just in his films, but in his public persona. And Twelfth Night is a lot about reinvention or invention of self in assembling who you are or learning to reassemble who you are, having lost sight of who you are. And so it felt like the right crucible for this play at this particular time for me. That notion of, um, you know, the sort of high style of 30s Hollywood um, with the foundation of the real struggles and obviously real challenges that these people felt that we know about because they were public figures. Um, with the idea that really you could move to Los Angeles in that time and if you were a combination of luck and talent and hard work, you could become anybody. Um, and that's kind of what happens to not just Viola as Cesario in this play, but so many of the characters. So it just made sense to me. And I love to, um, not just the look of the era, but the sound of that era, those you know, the, that sort of American songbook era, and uh, 
our composer, David Rifle, is an old, old friend of mine. Um, we used to work together many years ago in Cornerstone, and he's a, a genius, and we haven't worked together in years, and it just seemed, this is his passion, is these guys, the Irving Berlins and the Cole Porters, and so it just felt like the right match of you know our chance to work together again. We have an extraordinary cast. Um, uh, Gina Daniels is Olivia, the Countess, um, who in our version is the biggest star in Hollywood, who has walked off the set of her latest movie because of the death of her brother. Um, Orsino, uh, the Duke, is the owner of Illyria Studios and the director of the film and madly in love with his star. She, of course, doesn't reciprocate. Um, and, and Duke Orsino is played by Elijah Alexander. Um, uh, Rodney Gardner is Festy. Dan Parker is Toby Belch. Dan Forth Comins is Andrew Aguecheek. Ted Dacey is Malvolio, who is based, we're basing his character very much on um, William Hayes, who was the inventor of the Hayes Code, which was the, <clears throat> excuse me, precursor to the ratings system in, for Hollywood movies, and was quite the um, censor back then, and quite the prude, um, so it seemed to fit. Um, Let's see who else. Barrett O'Brien is Antonio. Dick Elmore is the sea captain and the priest. Kate Mulligan is Mariah. And playing Viola and Sebastian is Sarah Bruner. So we will do some uh, magic of cinema for the big reconciliation scene where she has to appear on stage with herself. But I, I won't spoil that by telling you what it is. Great. <laughs> it's a really amazing cast. 